Okay, so now we're going to fit the uh, outer main shaft bearing. Okay, um, so I've had this uh, in the freezer to shrink it. And then we've got this really hot in the sort of barbecue oven outside. And I'm hoping that this time this is going to drop in. We'll see, hopefully see the difference between this one and the inner case. There, in. Yeah, fully home. Yeah, just give it a tap to make sure. <clears throat> just while I remember, yeah, you never ever tap a bearing in on the inner race because you can damage it. <clears throat> you always find a socket or something that's big enough to tap things in on the outer race. But uh, yeah, in this case, um, yeah, it's... Uh, You know that's as it should be for a bearing. Now, if you remember the trouble we had with the uh, with this uh, inner case over there, you can see the difference. I mean that just like basically fell in. We got this nice and hot. We got the bearing nice and cold. Shrink one, expand the other, and then it goes. So <clears throat> I think that these these cases are probably you know machined machined too tight, uh, too small, and that's why those bearings are really hard to get in the. Um, the main shaft and the lay shaft bearing on the uh, inner shell. Anyway, that's in now. I let it cool down, and then we're getting ready <clears throat> to put the, uh, the sort of inner casing or central casing on the shell. Okay, so we're turning our attention to the kickstart. And what we're going to do is we're going to change the pull on the kickstart. Here's the original on the right. You can see that it's worn. This top corner here, this top edge, which is what engages with the um, first gear on the lay shaft uh, to kick the bike over. So as a matter of course, <clears throat> you know, we're changing that. Or, or rather, there's slight wear. And so we're also putting a new spring in as well that, that holds the uh, pawl make, makes it engage <coughs> is it, i think it's worth doing you know if there's any sign of wear at all then uh you know you don't want to be dealing with a a, a, um, a slipping uh kickstart whatever you do nothing worse so there's the spring goes in then there's the cap goes on the spring yeah. And that then engages with the kickstart pull. And then there's a pin, like a top hat pin. It's got a you know head on one end. And the head goes in from this side. I'm probably gonna to fail to do this miserably now, and I Because what I've got to do is line and line the holes up. There we go. Right. And there we've got the active pull, and that will engage. Whoops. That will engage with the uh, with the splines with the. Yeah. Oh, move this over. There we go. It engages with the sort of teeth on the of the sort of inside teeth of that first gear to to kick the bike over okay so now we've got um, the pole fitted so what we're going to do is we're going to insert it into the lay shaft first gear and compress the pole there so it slots in there. and we know that's going to engage nicely we're not going to have a problem. Right, so we're nearly ready now to fit the uh, inner casing.
Uh, let's have a look. Obviously, one thing we do have to do is to get everything's everything's bagged up and labelled in a gearbox uh, nuts and a trunnion. Always, always have everything. Oops, always have everything labelled. So here we have the trunnion, uh, which I'm going to put nut in now because don't forget the trunnion on pre mark threes you have to fit the trunnion now before you fit the inner casing can't be done uh, can't be done afterwards on the mark threes they change it so you can actually put that trunnion in with the inner casing on i think we're all about ready so we'll put some um well sealed jointed compound on we'll clean the uh, faces up put some jointed compound on get the gasket fitted and then we should be able to get the inner cover on okay so i've put well seal on both mating surfaces and i don't know if i've mentioned this before but i just use a small craft brush and just uh, like paint it on left it go off for a few minutes and I've fitted the uh, gasket onto the inner facing. And now hopefully, <clears throat> I do say hopefully, uh, then we'll get the uh, uh, sort of inner casing on. Mm -hmm. It'll either slip straight on or it won't want to know at all. The thing is, we've got three three different shafts to line up we've got the kickstart shaft the main shaft and the uh, fork uh, selector fork shaft then of course we've got all the dowels and we've got the um, studs and we've got the two locating dowels so there's quite you know a high probability that things something somewhere won't line up but you know we'll give it a go i'll put some oil on the kickstart shaft Okay, so that's on. Mm. Ah, there we go. I think maybe the kickstart was in the wrong place. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Everything seems to be okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do up the seven. Is there seven? <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So five inside and two outside. Uh, nuts okay um so i've done these nuts up these seven nuts up to uh, um 12 foot pounds torque i've got a mini torque wrench for that um and i had to use my sort of like very thin socket thin whitworth socket to get to these it's worth noting that even with my thin socket i couldn't get on these two so i had to do those by hand and sort of with a spanner and just like get it to as near to 12 as I thought. Then I've turned the gearbox over again, put a span, put a spanner on the cam plate nut, turn the gearbox over and yeah, we've got all four gears in neutral. It's currently in neutral. I know that because I can turn the main shaft and the sprocket separately. Uh, so that's good. So the next job is to put the kickstart spring on. Uh, which I'm probably going to do off camera because I know it's going to it's just going to be one of those big jobs. <laughs> it's just going to be a pain in the backside, and I and I don't know of any real tricks of doing it. There probably are, but um, when I've when I've got it on, I'll tell you the the trick that I used. Well, there we go. Of course, it went that spring went on really easily. So uh, got it over the shaft, located this end in the kickstart shaft. Then there's this spring end, which is actually round about here, I thought. I'm never going to be able to bend that all the way around. 
but just with a pair of snipe nose pliers, I got it round and just got it over the pillar. And uh, so there we are. So um, good. So uh, last job, <coughs> well, not last job, but the next big job is doing up the um, nut on the main shaft.